Hi. Welcome to the challenge, Tommy Walsh. And today, the challenge brings us to the outskirts of Reading. This is a brand new project, and we're working on a bungalow. Incidentally, do you think you'll fit in there? <laughs> oh, I bet you chose this one, didn't you? Because it's only a short door. Yeah, it needs to be a bit wider for me, though. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Morning, Tommy. John. John. Helen. And Helen. Helen. How are you? Hello, this is Big Al. Hi there, John. Alan. Pleased to meet you. Right, okay. now, you've got us all the way over in Reading to do a challenge for you. Yeah. Would you try and explain to us exactly what you want? Well, as you can see, we're living in quite a smallish bungalow at the moment. We've got two young children. We really need some more space. We want to convert our loft. So one of the oh, that's a good way of getting extra yeah, space. It is. It means you don't lose any garden. Right. <laughs> so one of the key things to make that happen for us is be able to get some stairs in into our hallway here. Yeah, so at the moment right. our hallway is a little bit too small to get the stairs in. So we need to extend our hallway out the front and then get some stairs in, hopefully the space we've created. Right, let's see if we can get ahead around this. Right, now, what we're going to do is bring... Open that up, bring a porch extension forward here. That's it, yeah. That'll make the hallway long enough to put yep. a staircase Hopefully. in. Hopefully. And what have you done here? I've already made a start, so I've had to get some foundations in to take this extension here. So I've had to dig down a metre here, basically backfill that with concrete. Let's save this one job. Let's go and so have a look has. at the hallway. Although John is a competent DIYer, he knew that this job was too big for him to take on himself. So that's why he called on me and Al. Nice wide hallway. Yeah, and the ceiling's not too high anyway. No, I can touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, John, I presume that this is where the staircase is going to go up. It is, here. right on that wall there, yes. Right. Well, the first immediate problem is going yes. to be taking this door and frame out it is. and blocking up. What's behind here, anyway? That moment is our bedroom. So Lucky the bed's made. Lucky the bed's made. <laughs> <laughs> Always is. So where's the new access for the bedroom going so we're hoping, to So I'm really hoping you guys can get us a new door in round the corner here. Right. Into that room. OK. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. If you go off and make us a cup of tea, we'll have a chat and see how much of this challenge we can do. No yeah. problem. Okay, Great. no problem. Thanks. Good deal, Thanks. Yeah. Right, so what's the best way to approach this? Well, for me, timber work wise, I've got to create the new well and opening for the staircase going up here. I've got to go up into the loft to assess what's going on up there before I can cut out. Well, if you do that, we can split our sort of labour, if you like, and I'll go out and work on the front because I've got to set out for the porch yeah. and the extension. Okay. And then we can kill two birds with one stone. Brilliant. See you at tea break. Okay. Well, this is just what I expected to find. A nice, big, open roof area. This is perfect for two rooms or more. But for me, I've got to try and find some load-bearing area for my staircase trimmers. And the first place I'm going is over there. Now, what I'm looking for down here is the wall plate, which is that down in the corner, the timber running that way, hard over against the roof edge. Now, that's where I'm going to pick up my joists load bearing at that end and they're going to follow this wall along here which is the side wall where the staircase is going to come up through here and then over here this is the other point I was looking for the load bearing wall the joists will go from that wall plate to this wall the reason for us to put new joists in is to beef up the whole area to receive the staircase so this is going to be a well, in effect, of opening so that the staircase can come up and through. So now I can go and get the joists cut and we can start strengthening all this area. Right, so this is what we're looking at. Basically, this is the proposed. Yes. And what we're doing is we're building this new front elevation here, this yep, porch that's area. that's right. And it's got a pitch roof on it as well. So we're going to run into that existing roof up there. Well, this is... Pretty straightforward. There's a lot of work to be done, though. You know that. Are you feeling fit? I'm feeling very fit and rested, so... All right, now, well, I reckon we should get the tools out, and I'm going to start marking out and cutting this up for demolition, all right? OK. Now, I have to drill a hole through this skin of brickwork to find out how far back the block work is inside. Now that's the depth of the cavity. So if I just measure that from my thumb, it's about 150 mil. Six inches in old money.
Oh, well, that is a dusty job. Now, the reason I've done that is because we've measured in where the inner skin of block work is, and we've got to take this out. But in order not to damage this face work brickwork, is I put a diamond saw cut down here, so when we smash that, this stays undamaged. My father built the place. He bought this plot of land back in 56 now. Paid about 150 pound. Because my father pulled the work back in then, I was really keen that I tried to, you know, try, tried to do most of it myself, rather than maybe just taking the easy way and paying a bill. And I kind of felt that sort of cheating in a way. I suppose in a way, carry on to the tradition that, you know, my father worked on it, so I work on it. So. It, but it's kind of, it comes to a point where you have to be realistic with that as well. And I guess sometimes I don't know my own limitations, and this is obviously quite a large project. And um, I do need some help, so that's, I'm really pleased that I've got some help this week. So. It'll be fantastic, though, for, Family the, girl, wise, yeah, for the girls. Family-wise. Yeah, for the girls. Yeah, it's going to be a fairly, you know, a big bedroom up there. Especially with uh, three women in the house. Lots of room for the getting ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm marking out here for where the staircase is going to come up through the old ceiling line and through these joists. It's actually called a stairwell, but you've got to mark it out from above so that when the staircase comes up, everything's neat and tidy. These marks here dictate where I'm going to be cutting through the floor. Now, there's marks here and marks over the other side as well. This piece of timber that I've put on here is to be screwed into place so that when these are cut through, all the weight of the plasterboard and these joists here don't sag under the... Well, if you trod on them, you'd be through. By cutting through all that, it leaves us an opening, and then we can start putting the trimmers and the rest of the heavy-duty timbers to support the staircase into position. Finish screwing it up first. By putting this block in position, having cut through all of these joist ends, when I cut through the joist ends at that end, this, this end is secured and the whole thing won't collapse to the floor. I want a controlled landing when we have all of this plasterboard come out. Uh -huh. Right. That's almost all the brickwork cut out. Now, the next task is breaking out concrete. Now, when it comes to breaking out floors, there's an easy way and a hard way. Well, there's no real easy way, there's an easier way. And what it means, actually, is concrete in a floor is like a sheet of ice. So if you take a lever, like a pickaxe or a bar, get it underneath. You must get it underneath the concrete and then lever it up in the air, like that. Then you'll be able to hit it with a hammer and it will shatter into loads of pieces like ice. Now, of course, if Alan was doing it, He'd probably do it the hard way, and we'd be here for the rest of the week just breaking that out. But when it comes to doing, using this method, you actually do need a pair of extra hands. So, John, will you come in no and problem, give Tommy. that a whack? Nice and hard. Yeah, now, you must, when you're using a sledgehammer, you must bend your knees and try and put the flat part of the hammer in contact with yep. the floor. OK. Rather than sort of the edge. Yeah. <coughs> so, when I say three, two, one... I was a bit concerned about this concrete because this house was built in the 50s and they sort of used to build things to last then. It was the 60s, wasn't it? Late 50s, yeah. Yeah, 50s, 60s, yeah. around that time. And when I first saw this big mass of concrete, I thought, oh, no, this could be a problem. Well, anyway, I've broken it all out. All that's got to be left to do is to clear it and throw it in the skip. So that's my job, yeah? And that's John's job. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Tommy. Lovely. You want to put someone up my spot board? Yeah, no problem. Obviously, Tommy and Alan are massive help to me this week because initially I was going to take all this on myself. A lot of it I really just didn't know how to do. I was going to have a go, but it probably would have taken me five times longer than them. They've been able to come in, the experience, give me a lot of help and advice, 
also pick their brains on some of my projects I'll be doing in the future as well. And a good laugh. Oh well, moment of truth. Are you ready, Tommy? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, 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 oh. I got it. I got it. All right, you yeah. come down the steps. Hey. You come down the steps. We have to turn it a bit on its side okay. because of the door, but we don't want all the gear to drop off indoors, all right? Okay. All right, so keep it, it at an angle, yeah? Yeah. Say, so, it is in the right place after all that, isn't it? Yeah, so are you, because I'm the one who's got to carry this out. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Not sure whether I was right. Always have two measures on one cut. And that was just as well because I was wrong. It's 135 mil, not 160. tip when it comes to muck, always wet the barrow before you put the muck in. What I've marked out and what I'm chopping here is an opening to receive an RSJ. That RSJ has got to be put in from here across to that side there and that's going to support the top of the staircase so that when you come up the stairs all of the weight of you, the staircase and anything you can't carry in goes straight onto the RSJ. So I've got to be very careful because I don't want to go through the plaster into the room the other side. Cool. Bit dusty in there mate. <laughs> How are you getting on? Well, I'm getting there. One side's all chopped out to receive the RSJ. Oh, to receive it? Yeah. yeah. Or, or so By I can, royal appointment, is or, it? Or so I can put it in. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to do the other side now. All right, because we're running... We're running a bit over time. Yeah, night's creeping in a bit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. The reason for me taking this door frame out of Annabelle's bedroom is so that we can reposition it here, put a new stud wall at the side of it and up to the wall there, and then it'll give us enough room here to put a new doorway through into John and Helen's bedroom. Before we can do that, though, I've got to take all this brickwork down. See here the lintel above. No short measures here, look. It's about a six inch lintel. I'm not going to be reusing that though. I'm going to put in a lightweight steel one because there's very, very little brickwork above that we've got to carry in weight for. So that's going to get scrapped. While I was knocking out the old lintel inside the house, I've reached damp course level with my new brickwork. This damp-proof membrane sits on a thin bed of mortar and will protect the house for generations to come. This area here is where I've got to cut out for a lintel above the new door frame that's going through to the bedroom. Now, I told you earlier about a new piece of kit. Well, this is it. It's a water-fed chainsaw with diamond blades. Now, this should be no obstacle for a piece of kit like this should cut through it like butter, but there is a bit of jeopardy because there's two courses of bricks above where this lintel's got to go in. I want them to stay in place. It's a calculated risk, it might work, it might not. Let's give it a go.
the chainsaw. The chainsaw was like having a motorbike in your <laughs> hallway. And I was actually across the road to have a cup of tea with a friend to just be out of the way for a half an hour while this was going on and we could hear it across the road. <laughs> Not that too many times you have an engine running in your house, no. is there? Just waiting for the, just waiting for Alan to shout timber, really. Oz was. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look at the state of you! Oh, I thought you'd find that You're going to need a shower and a bath tonight. Yeah, you're not kidding. I think the Uber blew up. <laughs> well, I'll finish here. You done inside? As much as I'm doing today. Yeah, all right, come on in. I'll buy you something to wet your whistle. I need that as well. We've done really well today. We've achieved one heck of a lot today. What we're doing here, really, John, is just getting all of this old spoil back yeah. down into the hole. But we've got to be a bit careful, because where, where Tommy's laid these blocks, yes. they're still a bit green. Yep. So we don't want to so be doing be too much jarring. No, right. that's right. So if we can get all this through and level, yep. then what we'll do is put the sand down yep. and then put the damp-proof membrane okay. on top. So How can we give you a hand with that? So is the sand to stop this puncturing the exactly. membrane? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You don't want to puncture the okay. membrane at all. Yeah. Um, and then we'll put the three-inch insulation on top of it, and then it's ready for the inspector. I was saying to my friend, I don't know how she had the builders in for four months, and um, I said that we've only had them in for a couple of days, and it's amazing how it takes over the house. In one respect, it's good to get it over with in five days, because um, I don't think having a builder in for four months, I think that could be pretty tough going. I think it's fair to say the work that probably got done this week would probably would have taken me a couple of months. Mm -hmm. You all right? Yeah, no problem. Now, if you feed yours in, in first. Try not to disturb the brick. Right, you are? Now, if you can get the acro underneath it. John's got some great information about the history of his family home. Now, yeah, look at this. Mr K.C. Clark, was that your dad? Well, my actual dad was L.C. Clark. That was actually a spelling mistake by the first year. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> On the purchase of the Cheap above one. property from, from Mr. H.J. Tubb for £150. Pounds. Oh, oh, that's yeah. expensive. And they've got stamp duty as well, even in them days. £1.16 shillings and sixpence. Do you remember old money? I can't tell me, unfortunately. Well, you're such I a liar. Remember. You must remember <laughs> it. I've seen some around, but I can't really remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great that you've got all this stuff here, though, isn't it? Do you have any brothers and sisters? <clears throat> yeah, I have a brother and sister that both grew up here as well. Did they yeah. did they think it uh, odd, or uh, did they mind in any way that they must have been pleased actually that you're coming back to the family home? They were pleased. Yeah, I mean, they they were like me. They they were quite um, loath to sell it really and see someone else moving in here. Mm. And, you know, probably doing what I'm doing to it now, to be honest. Yeah. So they're quite pleased that if someone was going to convert the loft and do this, that it was. That it was me, really. And it also means they can still come here and visit mm. and see the place. John is insulating a new porch floor with waterproof sheeting and foil back foam, as required by the building regulations. Let's see if it satisfies the local district surveyor. 70 mil Salatex with a 50 mil insulated upstands. Right. And then the second DPM. Okay, and you've been over it with a compactor and everything. Yeah, I've got the. Uh, been a while. A, a replaced rammer. Oh right, okay. That's yeah. Just, yeah, for the little thing. Good. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. And you want me to see something inside? I think. Now then, Mr. Kaybeck, this is what we've got here. Put the RSJ in it here, and I've also put in the RS or the little lintel to go above the new opening that I've got to cut out. Cut out here. Are you happy with everything that I've done here? There's semi-engineering bricks there, slate packers. Obviously, I won't take out these until till the, sure. the uh, mortar's gone off. Uh, and then there'll be a stud work round there. Are you happy with everything? Yeah, that's fine. Just um, a little bit of concern about the, the bearing of the lintel there, but um, where, you, where you've got the box lintel, but I think with the light loading that you've got, you should be OK. Thanks very much, sir. OK. All Thanks passed, are we to, go, to move on? Yep, that's fine. Oh, okay. excellent. Thanks, Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's the pass. Can move on. Happy days. Tommy will be chuffed. Oh, 
stick out. <laughs> and again. Well, it's the end of day two, and we're well on target to complete the challenge. Come on, Tom, I'll buy you a beer. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Cheers. You? Oh, got it. Yeah, I got it. Welcome to Challenge Tommy Walsh. We're creating a staircase access for a future loft conversion, and all's going well here at the bungalow, isn't it? It is. It's going really well. <laughs> we've put the foundations in, all the brickwork for the base of the porch extension is done. And inside, we've took out an area in the ceiling that's going to receive the staircase up and through. We've put in an RSJ, got that passed, yeah. and we've also got all the trimmers ready to cut to go in alongside the staircase. Yeah. And we've removed a couple of doors and frames from some old redundant doorways. And we've put in a lintel where there isn't a doorway yet. And no staircase until... Oh, yes, oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Right on time, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Trust me, I'm a joiner. We're setting John and Helen on their way to a loft conversion by opening up the attic space and extending the hallway to make room for a new staircase. Right. Now, the concrete floors in there under there being protected, that's going off. All the base brickwork's done, and that's all set, ready for us to now start building this porch extension. So I'm just setting out the brickwork dry without any mortar so that we get the bond right, so that we know that when we actually build this up, we'll get the bond right. It's half bond. So you always spend a bit of time at the beginning to make sure you get it right. So we've done all the cuts, setting out the block work, and then we're going to fix it to these starter bars all the way up. And we're going to go 28 courses right the way up to the top on both sides, and that will actually give us the room. And we're going to build the framing if I can get Alan out here to do some work, because I think he's fell asleep up there in the loft. Now for the first bit of muck. Al's fitting the trimmers that support the joist cut ends and will give extra strength to the new stairwell. So, let me ask you a question. What made you buy this house? Right. If you wanted one that was twice the size. That's a very good question. I guess it's really the, um, the sentimental value was the main reason, because I see my dad building it. Unfortunately, he passed away two years ago now. And, did um, he know that you, you bought the house? He didn't. I spoke to him, because um, we knew he was ill, obviously, and I said, I'd, you know, I'd like to buy it, and what did he feel? And he said he'd be really pleased to think that, you know, his grandchildren were going to grow up here and... Uh, his legacy. His legacy. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, because obviously he put a lot of hard work in here when he was doing it. Plus, I know that my dad always wanted to do this anyway. So, oh, did he? So it's kind of only putting into practice what he was wanting to do. So kind of that makes it feel easier for me as well. I'm not kind of like taking apart what he did. Yeah, well, I was um, very close to my dad, you see, and yeah. I lost my dad, what, four years ago. He was, he was my mentor and he was also my best pal. So yeah, so that's hard. And he said, I can understand and appreciate what you're doing yeah. here, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. It takes time. Well, I'll make sure I'll make a proper job of it, something that he'll be... Because <laughs> if he's watching... He'll be watching, yeah. I want to make sure he'll he's happy you. with what I'm doing. <laughs> Diamond-bladed, water-cooled chainsaw. It'll cut through this wall like butter. Let's give it a go. John. Nice what do you reckon to that? I reckon that's a fantastic job. Much easier than chiselling it. Well, it certainly is, but it's still not an easy job, even though I've got this. I say, I've just had a thought. Are you sure that's where the doorway is? 
Well, let's put it this way. That's where it's going now. <laughs> it certainly <laughs> is. God, I enjoyed that. How satisfying. Are you ready for this frame, Tommy? Uh, sorry? Are you ready for this frame? Some type of day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell how you're feeling. <laughs> yeah. You need to come over. Right, this is the door frame. That's where the door goes, is these two window lights. We're putting it in position now so that we can actually get some frame ties into the frame and into the brickwork. That'll hold it while it goes off. This is turning out to be a major challenge, so it's all hands on deck. Brickwork to existing. They really have made a wonderful job of this staircase for us. It's fabulous. Piranha pine strings, piranha treads and risers, but they haven't done it all for me. I've still got the newel base to put on. That slips on like so. A couple of dowels up the back, and then all I've got to do is a couple of little cuts, and fingers crossed it'll drop on the trimmers. Job done. <laughs> John's finished blocking up the doorway and the hall is nearly ready for the stairs. Now that the RSJ supports have set, me and Al can take away the acros and bring the staircase in. Could have done with a bit of oiling up before you started, couldn't they? Yeah, they're a bit stiff. But this is in place now, that's solid, gone off. Yeah. The whole cut, all the trimmers in, yeah? Yeah, all finished. Well, it's ready for the staircase to come in, isn't it? Yeah, shall we go and fetch it in? Lovely. Moment of truth. Yeah. Ooh. Are you going to be all right with that end? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So two of you's got to end. Me. Never had it. Ready? I'll tell you what, I'll get in the middle. Thank you. One, two, three, Ready? lift. Oh. There we go. Sit. Ah, this looks good. All right. Well, he is. That's John just demolished me frame out there. <laughs> fantastic. Oh. They look a bit long. But they have got to go up at an angle, so don't worry, Alan. <laughs> you keep doing yeah, that to me, Alan. You keep doing that it's to me. It's all good fun, though, isn't it? You're not going to get this. This is longer, much longer than the space you've got to put it in. I reckon if you roll this over on the flat, tie it up to the, to the wall there, yeah. so that that's going over on the flat as well, I think it'll just go. I think it'll just poke up. All right, you wouldn't like a wager on it, would you? Come on, in, let's try yeah. it. Yeah, I'll, I'll go for a wager. Yeah. Well, we've tried it. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Is this for the right house? What do you think is the best way for us to get this in now that Alan sort of measured it and made it this long? Well, I personally, mm. I think, take it out the door, mm -hmm. turn it, tilt it slightly, mm -hmm. slightly over, mm -hmm. maybe at this end, bit of, bit of strength, lift it up, in it goes. All right, let's okay. go for that. Right, now, if I hold the end up here in the air, you two lift that and bring it in. OK. <laughs> easy, easy. Shut the door. Right, now, get your hands out. Yep. Hey. Oh. This is Al's readjustment. I'd say those stairs are slightly too steep, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. I don't think they... You'd need an ice axe to get out there. I don't, th I don't think the inspector will pass them, do you? <laughs> I don't think he'd be able to pass up on me, would he? <laughs> the stairs are a bit too big, so John's going to cut a hole in the wall to fit them in. It's a good job this wall and front door are getting demolished later. I've found out what the problem is. 
Well, what's we've got we've got the going, which is the tread distance from front to back of two two five on here. Couldn't understand where we'd lost that three hundred millimetres and why it wouldn't go in. Wasn't the fact that your measurement was wrong? No, I haven't measured wrong at all. Is it going on there? It's the architect's fault, is it? No, it's not the architect's either. Oh right. I think what we've is got is it my is... fault. No, it's not yours. Oh. Yeah, I think it's we're more. Getting, my... We're getting somewhere it's now. It's more mine than anybody. We've eliminated Al. We've eliminated myself, <laughs> and we've eliminated <coughs> the architect. I know whose fault is John's. No, it's no, it's ours. not. It's not. It's my fault, actually. No, it is. I don't mind admitting this. We've got a we've got a tread of that size yes. on the on the plan, but in actual fact, the, the tread that's arrived on the staircase is that big. The joinery firms. No, it's not their fault. It's an oversight from me, really, when oh. I ordered the staircase. You're just making yourself the sacrificial lamb. Well, no, because I've got to I've got to admit to it. I, I couldn't understand why it wouldn't go in, but it's yeah. gone in. Well, I think it'll go in now. Well, it's like a square pin in a round hole, isn't it, at the moment? You <laughs> ready then? I've got this out. Okay. We'll slowly draw it this way. Easy, easy. May have to happen. Oh. It's all right. Oh. Hold up. Yeah, just rest it there. <laughs> now, if you can just hold that in position there, I'll nip up through the loft hatch and then check that it's just going to drop over that trimmer. <laughs> Got it. Perfect. Perfect fit. Lovely. Do you know what? This has turned out to be quite a tough challenge. We're at the end of day three. And we've only got two days left, but at least the staircase is in. Yeah, and if we take our time, I'm sure we can complete the challenge, providing we do it step by step. Day four of the challenge, and the clock's ticking. I don't know whether we're going to get done, you know. We have got so much on here, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Did you expect to get this far, then, John, with this staircase? I think we've done well, you know, up to now, to get as where we did. It wasn't easy getting in, was it? None of the jobs have been big, easy. It's really. a big staircase. But that's the problem with it's in effect, it's almost renovation. You're having to unpick yeah. before you can start fresh and new. It's harder, isn't it, than building for new, isn't it? It is far harder. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people fall foul. They think, oh, it's only just a case of taking that out and putting this in as new. But it doesn't work that way. Because so you've tackled this on your own then. I think it would be impossible to do this bit on your own. I think I'd have probably got some friends around and yeah. maybe give them a beer and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully they're fit to lift it up there. What do you reckon to Tommy? Uh... He's, he's kind of what I was expecting, really. He's kind of a nice, down-to-earth guy. Yeah. Um, he, he's very thorough yeah. in what he does, very yeah. professional. Right, that's the staircase, all level and all fixed. As you know, we've had a few little glitches with this staircase, and we've got another one because the door is all blocked up and we've still got the long handrail to bring in, but we've got a cunning plan. John! See, where there's a will, there's a way. Thanks, John. Right, what we have to do now is connect this to the monkey's tail at the bottom and then to the newel posts and finally the curtail step spindles. So we've got a bit of gluing up to do first. Alan, this is looking really good now, isn't it? It is. It's coming on, but there's a bit of fiddly bit here. If you can just hold that tight in the tenon... Yeah, that that's drops tight. in there. And then these drop into place as well. We need to feed four in at the same time. The street that John and Helen live on is fascinating because every property on it is a self-built bungalow. The actual word bungalow comes from a Hindi word, bangla, which describes traditional Bengali housing. Now, there's also a popular misconception that bungalows are cheaper to build than houses, whereas in reality, you've got to put deeper, greater foundations, you've got a much larger roof space to build, and most importantly, you need a lot more land. 
So why are they so popular? I think as you get older and the kids are off hand, you don't need so much space. And also you can save the old legs on the apples and pears. But what's developed now in modern times, there's been an added bonus for younger people to buy bungalows because they're absolutely perfect for putting a loft conversion in. I've come to visit a bungalow across the street with a fantastic loft conversion just to see what John and Helen can look forward to. Hi. Well, it's Helena, isn't it's it? Tommy. Yes, it is. Come on Thanks in. for letting me come over to uh, have a look around your house. Wow, this is what we've look uh, at that. acquired. It's amazing the potential of a bungalow, isn't it? Yes, it's given us four, five more rooms upstairs. Can I have a look? Yes, of course. The old stairs are a bit creaky. I bet I know who fitted them. It wasn't a certain Alan Hurd, was it? Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> but if you can get him to come and fix them so he doesn't wake my children. It's fantastic, this space. It's almost atrium-like, because you've got these, these roof lights and it's all nice and bright and clear and spacey. Light and airy. That's what attracted us to the house in the first place. You can't beat natural light. No, no. Is this the first, first room? So it's, well, it's a bedroom, really. That's what you've got here. Yes, this is going to be baby's room when he's old enough. No, but they do create nice rooms because they follow the shape of the roof. That's what I like about um, when you convert roof space, you know. The rooms have got a bit more character than just being square boxy. Yeah. Um, and yes, we've got the view. And of course, when you do convert, you've always got an extra storage space behind those the cupboard doors. This room, oh, an office. Yes. Or study. My husband works from home, so he, this is where he spends most of his time. So what have you gained up here? You've got one, two, four rooms and a bathroom. Yes. It's terrific, isn't it, what you can do? Time's moving on, so I really must get cracking with this porch roof. Tommy's finished his brickwork, and I've got to now put the whole roof into position. I've got to cut it as well. This bit is quite tricky. There's jack rafters down here running into a ridge, and I've got fascias and soffits. There's loads to do and very little time. I'd better get cracking and get them tiles off. Well, best laid plans and all that. It just had to rain when I started the roof, didn't it? I'm waiting. I'm going to have a cup of tea. The heavens have just opened up and now we're, we're a bit washed out, so we're just standing under here, trying to keep dry and hopefully we'll be back out for the second half. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this weather stops. We'll have the roof up. Now that the glue has gone off to this null post spindles and handrail, I can set about putting the spindles from the bottom to the top. Now, I've put my first spacer in, and this one's always a bit tricky up here, where you're going round this curved push portion of the handrail. First one in, then you put your next spacer and your next spindle on top. And when they're all in there, all the way to the top, they'll look superb. I'm with Patricia, who's John's sister. Now, Patricia's got something to tell us about this room, haven't you, Patricia? Um, yes, this used to be my bedroom, and um, I moved in here when I was three, and the floor was actually made by my father. Um, it's all wooden, and my great-uncles had a wood-laying company. Um, right. This is all off-cuts, and my father used to cut these all up and lay these all down. So. This hasn't been made by the factory, this was made by no, your father? this was made by my father. He cut all these up into little squares and laid them all down himself. What a beautiful floor that is. And that's all been made by hand, not by a machine chunking them out by the thousand. We've got two or three more spindles to go in this staircase and that's all done. And right on cue... Al, the last three spindles. Brilliant, thanks mate. You know what? Right. It's looking pretty good, son. It is. I'm pleased with it. I've taught you well. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's the staircase all complete. I better go and crack on with the next job. The 
rain stopped. So Alan's finally getting to cut the hole in the roof. Let's hope it doesn't start again. We've stripped the roof back to receive the ridge for the new roof over the porch. This hefty chunk of wood is going to take the weight of the ridge while we get the rafters in place. And it's also going to transfer the weight away from the top of the door frame. Let's see if it fits. Perfect. Right, next bit. Are you really, really wet, Al? I'm saturated. <laughs> you look all washed up, mate. I feel it. You ready to go? Let's go. Oh, that's one thing you can't plan for, and that's the great British weather. It's the end of day four. We haven't achieved what we wanted, and we've still got tons to do. So join us for day five and see if we complete the challenge. We're in Reading at John and Helen's bungalow. Our challenge is to give them access to their loft space and so far we've built an extension to the hallway with a new door frame and we've put in a brand new staircase. We have a slight problem. It's day five of the challenge and day four didn't go according to plan because we had some inclement weather and the roof wasn't finished. It wasn't, you're right. We've still got that to complete. We've still got... That's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got... <laughs> We've got, we've got a, uh, where do I start? We've got the front door to hang, the two side lights on the front door. The old front panel, door panel to come out. And the brickwork to take out. All of it to render and skim. And we've got to assemble the studding that we've... Oh, no pressure, then. Fitting the staircase created more work for us because it blocked the original doorway to John and Helen's bedroom. As a result, we had to steal some of Annabelle's bedroom to make enough room for two new doorways. There, that's the studding all complete. Can you all right? Yeah, right, right here. Right. That's what I like, a whole wall in one, Al. Huh? Not well, that. Yeah. You got any folding wedges? Yeah. There you go, sir. Lovely. I'll finish this off. All right. All right. I'll go and get on. Now, we have to... The trick is, when you make something complete in one, let's make it slightly undersized so you can actually get it in the position. And then just cut a couple of folding wedges like that. And then we just... And there you go. Makes it nice and tight. Squeezes it up to the ceiling and lines us up with our fixing point. Now, one other problem that we have is because this stud work is so tight here, because it's just a tight corner, for me to get the screw gun into there is quite problematic. So, Al bless him, he's got a real handy little tool that he's borrowed me, and it's this. This is a flexi driver, see? So you put this in, in here like so. Tighten it up. Then put the, the screw bit in the end, like that. And then we get a screw. And then we come round here and into the end. And then... See? There's always a solution to every problem. Ready for a break, Tommy? Oh, yes, mate. Look at that. Bit of, bit of infestation here, some oh. woodworm. And where have you chew. found that? I found that actually that was near Alan's wallet. Mm, not surprised. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so rarely he ventures out. Talking of Alan, what do you think about his work on the staircase? I absolutely love it. It's really fantastic. Really does look good. But what about all the mess? Has it all been worth it, do you think? I think so. At the end of the day, the mess has been worth it. 
Um, it will just be a distant memory. Once this is all decorated and it's finished, it's surprising how quickly, you know, the, the bad part of the memory fades. Yeah. You yeah. know, you won't wake up having nightmares no. thinking about Alan all the time, I can assure you. It looks really good. It's really worth the mess. But the problem is, do you think you can sort of fit round this staircase? Because oh. I've tried to get round there and I'm just a tad too wide to get round that opening. Yeah, I think I could. Yeah, you can. Or do you want us to take this down? Um, yeah. Yeah, you could take that. Yeah, that, that might be quite helpful, actually. Yeah. yeah. When you're doing rendering, you should use either a very fine, washed, sharp sand or what we traditionally know down south as late and buzzard sand, which comes from a certain area. And that's just the right type of sand for rendering. But we haven't got any here. We've only got very coarse, sharp sand, which we use for flooring when we're putting a screed down. And we've got soft sand. So what I've done, I've mixed the two half and half. Four and one mix with a bit of plasticizer. And that's what we're left with. The tip about plastering, and rendering is you should always start at the top of the wall. Always start at the top of the wall. Yeah. You know why? Go on. Because what you do when you when you plaster, so you put some on a hook and then you hold the hook yeah. underneath where you're plastering so that it catches anything that falls, right? Okay. Now if you were to start at the bottom and work up, you would then be putting the hook onto the wall onto that you've your... already plastered. Yeah. And as you take it off, you could knock the plaster off the wall. So you work from the top and come down. It's easier if you're at the top, aren't it? Pun? It's easier for you, your height to get up the top, isn't it? Well, you know, it does have some advantage of being tall. As it happens, I could see you could do with uh, growing a few inches or two, couldn't you? I'm having to use this, mate, just to keep the high <laughs> level with you. I think if if Alan and Tom, Tommy came round to anybody else's house in the village or any friends, I'd tell them to be prepared for their jokes and their wind-ups. Um, because we've had quite a few of those this week, haven't we? Yeah. And um, have plenty of tea and coffee, um, lots of biscuits and lots of biscuits. cakes, and keep them happy. Prepare themselves for hard work, I think, because uh, they do. They have worked me hard this week as well. <laughs> it's been fun. It's been good, hasn't it? It's been fun, and we've yeah. got some work done. So yeah. it's great. Do you know what, Mr. Hurd? It's somewhat ironic, you know that whilst you're cutting the roof to put over my head while I'm getting wet, that you're standing with the roof over yours nice and dry. Well, I was actually thinking about health and safety. You know, with it being so wet out there and yeah. me using electric tools, I thought I'd better have the tent rather than you. Oh, because I'm not using electric tools, I'm using manual tools. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's got an answer for everything, you know that? <laughs> I'll just go and get wet then. That comes with working with you. <laughs> These are the rafters that I'm cutting that are going to go up the valley and onto the existing roof, and they're a bit tricky, and they're called jack rafters. Now, this is what they call a compound mitre, because that fits from the top of the new roof into the existing roof onto a valley board. But rather than me blabbering on about it down here, I'll take it with me and I'll show you. This is the existing roof and our new porch roof comes in and intersects just here. That's why we've got to have the two angles on the bottom of the rafter and that's called a compound mitre. As any builders will know, when it comes to doing work on a house, when you're doing roofs, it rains, and when you're fitting kitchens, it's glorious sunshine. And true to call, look what's happening. Why work out in the wet when there's plenty to do inside? Lovely and solid. Let's see. Perfect. At least now they've got their privacy back. And I've left a little gap at the bottom so the carpets can go straight back down. Are you all right down there in the rain, Tommy? Do you know what, Al? This is the first. Do you know that? The first time I've ever done the plastering side of building before the roof is on. 
I take you to extremes you've never known. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> John's making a lot of noise in there, isn't he? Yeah. He sat on the stair. He sat on the stairs, hitting it with a hammer. Well, I, I showed him how to do it to make him look busy. <laughs> they kind of work very well together. They they kind of bounce things off each other all the time. So if Tommy's got something he's trying to, you know, problem he's trying to get over, he seems to talk to Alan and vice versa. In between them, they can kind of pick each other's brains and experience. And not, you know, with what I've seen this week, they'll come up with a very good solution that's both quick to do and, you know, really top job. Tom is very quick at what he does, so it's, I normally take my time a little bit more. I probably might get the same result, but take four times longer, so it's been good to see how I can speed some of those things up. I'm going to take the, uh, the door and the wall out soon. Yeah, OK. Well, I've just got this... I've, well, everything's cut for this side. I've just got to put this, this uh, jack board in. That's the last piece of timber cut. All I've got to do now is get it felted in. And perhaps Tommy will stop moaning at me about getting wet then. Right, give me a little push on your side, John. Go on. No, wait, that's it. We need to turn it. Let me have it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Tell you what, this will make a good ramp for the skip. For the well. barrows up, won't it? Demolition can be a fun part of the job. But if you go at it like a bullet a gate, you can end up doing more harm than good. This felt will weatherproof the new roof. Oh, John, by the way, you didn't want this frame, did you? No. That's good. Good. <laughs> Just pinch it up a little bit more, John. A little bit more. Yep, just... Yeah, go together. Right. That's it, Walt. That's it. You can hear it going there. Yeah, no, it's fine. That's actually lifted it off yeah. a little bit. Now, what we want to do, this great big lintel has got to come out because uh, in order to form this big open uh, hallway here, we no longer need it. It's redundant. But it's very big and it's very heavy. So in order to do it safely, we're going to acro this up temporarily and then we take some of the brickwork out underneath the lintel either side and then that will allow us to lower it down to a safe handling level so no one gets injured. That sounds a good plan. Good plan. Right. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. You want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. Let me ask you something, Helen, there. Yeah. Helen, now, what do you think? Looks good. It's all opened up really well. You know, when you say it looks good, you don't sound as if you're saying that with much passion, you know. When you say, you say it looks good, as if you really want to say... Ah! <laughs> Once I, I've got to take this big lintel out, and that'll open the whole thing up. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll get a sense of proportion yeah. in that, that, you know, how big the... Because you know how small it was confined before? It was. It's going to open the whole thing yeah. right up. And you'll be able to get up the stairs then. We will, won't we? But I mean, you could get up there yeah. before anyway, but now we'll be able to get up the stairs. We're slightly... Um, what would you say? No, you're all right. You're all right. <laughs> Right, it's got to go level with the top of the door frame. Mm. OK, like that. Hold it. You're up a bit, I am. If you get I'll a cramp up on... just a little bit. Hold on, let me get her up again. About there? Yeah. Now, okay. now I'm level. Let me get one fixing out and then sort yours out. Are you level with the brickwork or not? No, not yet. Hold up. <laughs> Lovely. That's good. That's it. It's like a Swiss chalet effect now, now. It is, yeah. It's coming on, but it's a lot of work in it. A lot of work. I've got... I've, I'm going to take these two bits of brickwork out, take the lintel down, then I can plaster the... render the rest oh, the of the return, walls. Yeah. Do you yeah. want me to give you a lift down with that, that lintel? No, I'll carry that four-tonne lintel down on my own. Oh, well, that's fair enough. 
Do you want me to give you a hand with this thing that weighs about ten pound? Yeah, I can do if you like. Yeah. Well, if you think you can manage that on your own, I'll let you do it. You know I will. Uh, right now, what we do out? This is actually sat in the wall about two inches there. Yeah. So if you get this end, just to make sure she don't come out. Yeah. <coughs> this end is not in the wall, so that should drop down onto here. Yeah. And if John unwinds this slowly, yeah. I'll take the weight. And when we get it down on here, we can then take the stuff off the top. OK. Then, like, yeah. Swing it round and get it out. All OK, right. fair enough. So, I'll just... Uh, let me see my best position. Well, I'll keep her going, keep the acro yeah. there, bring her down. I don't want this to come down too quickly. No, I don't. Let me try it. You've got the acro there, let me put it onto the acro. Ready? Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Right, so, see the gap there. Uh, I think we might be, we might be as wedged now. Right, go on. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Let it come down onto that. Yeah, I am. You all right, there, Al? Yeah, fine. Right now, I'll tell you what I'd like to do as well, Al. Before we take this out, I'm just going to swing it back. Because I think what we should do is take that loose course of brick out now from above. So it can land on here rather than on the brand new staircase. Try and take a brick out complete out. Pass it to John. See what happens when you get joiners demolishing things. Wait, 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 wait. No, just take them out one at a time now. Hold on. That's it. I've got it. Here, take it off me, John. So I'm cross arm it. Well, that was sort of semi-successful. At least it didn't fall on the stairs. It's very heavy, guys. Right. Keep going back, Tommy. Right, you ready? You safe? Yeah. Who put that big step there? Go on. I've got it. Ow. Ooh. You all right? Yeah. That's it. Ah. Now, stand it up. Right. Now, there's an interesting point here, Al. Come have a look. Now, see here, look, there's a newspaper. Mm hmm Why is that there? It's to bond the gypsum to the concrete. Good try, but not quite the right answer. <laughs> this was probably cast here on site. So they put mm -hmm. a plywood board down, a bit of yeah. shuttering up the side, cast this in it with reinforcing in. Instead of using a releasing agent like mould oil, yeah. put some newspaper down and stop it bonding to the wood. So mm -hmm. when it sets, yeah. just push it off. And hence, you get, that's what I think it is. Right. Uh-huh. Sounds logical to me. I mean, look here, look. Do you want to Military secrets be the night in part. It must be a posh paper. We better not read this. Come on. Must be one of them broadsheets. Something that's really going to make that porch look nice and attractive is a pair of gallows brackets, one either side of the front door. When these are all made and put together, put up into position, they'll make the porch look fabulous. These are just the braces I'm cutting out here. The finishing touches to the transformation. The front door and the side lights. Right, let me give you a hand. Mm -hmm. Now, you want me to hold this? Yeah. I'll put it on my right. foot. Tell you when. OK. All right, that's the first one in there. Oh, Ray, last one. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> Come on in. That's it, all done. Let's shut this down. <laughs> I can't that believe fun. it. At last, we've finished. Ah, oh, you made a cracking job of that. I'm very pleased with it, and mm. it looks nice. Mm. Really pleased. Do you remember what it looked like when we first started? Oh. <laughs> well, come on, guys, let's look at this. This is it complete. Well, to a degree. <laughs> what do you think? 
absolutely fantastic. Absolutely amazing. What a difference. Well, the amount of space is created and the fact now that you've got a beautiful staircase and you've got plenty of access for it, when you open the door, you've even got space to come and take your boots off because it does tend to rain a bit round here, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can you know, swing a cat now, can't yeah. you? Yeah, you can swing more. You can swing a tiger round here. <laughs> so are you happy with it? I think it's amazing that, you know, the difference it's going to make for me to be able to finish a project upstairs. Obviously now the access is open right up, so even for getting materials up there and being able to work up there, now it's going to be so much easier. And have you so, picked any uh, tips up from us while we've been working with you? Lots of tips, especially on the cake making and the tea making, you know, exactly <laughs> when you want it and Very how fun. you like it. <laughs> <laughs> so now all we've got to do now is actually leave the rest up to you. You've just got to put the windows in your... Uh, your dormer windows up Upstairs, there, and then yeah. you can extend the loft yourself. Thank you, guys. Yeah. You're pleasure. welcome. It's our pleasure. Yeah. Yes, it looks man. fantastic. Don't phone us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> one, one little sketch here was enough for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we better say goodbye. Yes, I do. So it's goodbye from Big Al and from me, Tommy Walsh. Until the next time, see you soon on Challenge Tommy Walsh. I think it's giving a lot more character, isn't it, to the to the front now. It's oh. quite plain. Sort of quite flat-faced, flat-fronted looking oh. bungalow. Before, so we give it, I think, a lot more character now. Um, we still get people now, don't we? Still saying how wonderful it looks. Obviously, well, now it's allowing me to carry on with the actual converting the loft, which is going to, um, which is going to be, which is going to be another fantastic sort of stage, isn't it, mm. for this, for the, mm. for the bungalow? It's going to give us a lot more space and make it into a more of a family, family. home, a lot more space for the girls and for us. I think the highest point for me, I remember, is actually when they cut down the, um, the hole in the ceiling in the um, hallway to make room for the stairs. And uh, I just don't think I'll ever forget that. It'll be in my mind for so quite a long time. You managed to actually see what's going to look like yeah. looking up, didn't you, at that yeah. point? I think for me, yeah. probably seeing the staircase going as well. You know, trying to you, you keep picturing what, what it's going to look like, but actually to see it go in, you know, it was, it was amazing. I picked Tommy and Adam's brains throughout the week, some of the work I'm going to be doing in the future. In between them, they've got a lot of different skills. Obviously, Alan's got some fantastic carpentry and, and Tommy, obviously, with his building. So between them, they're, they're able to do a really, really first-rate job. The stairs has made a tremendous effect on the hall. Um, and my little girl, Gemma, that's all she talks about. She tells everybody now that we've got stairs in our house. We've got a house now, even though it's just the stairs there. And the rooms yeah. aren't up there. They said, oh, we've got a house now. Yeah, we've got and a house. Uh, we haven't got a bungalow anymore. We've no. got a house. So I think even though it's... Looks a small addition, but really it's created a lot more space in there, and the staircase just seems like it just really fits there. And it's always been, I think, when it's finished, you, you won't, I don't think you'll know that that was added on. It just looks like it was always there. I think overall, when we look back, it's made a tremendous difference, you know, to get so much work done in such a short space of time, and it's just been a great overall experience. It was really good fun, and it was a really great good fun. experience. Yeah, hard work, but excellent fun. Mm -hmm.